So while women are mourning the fantasy of marriage or getting divorced, make this your couple goals. Jane Fonda is so in love with her best friend and vice versa. It is honestly one of the most beautiful. And again, we don't know these people. Maybe it's all a bunch of BS, but look at the way she's looking at her. Find you a friend who looks at you like that. Screw the idea of like a man completing you, man making you happy because most of them are not going to. And focus instead on finding someone or a few someones who look at you like this when you're talking. I've talked on here before about how I think Gracie, Grace and Frankie is one of the best love stories of all time. And one of my favorite things about that show is that these two older women get, you know, they get screwed over by their husbands who have been cheating on, on them for like 30 years or something. I don't even know how long. Um, because they're gay. They're closeted gay men. So the show, there's so much about the show I love. But my favorite part of the show is the love between those women. How even though they, they tried to date other men, you know, like Jane Fonda's character even got engaged or got married to one of these men. And bo every time they're like, no, I just don't love them as much as I love you. <laughs> like no man could fill their needs and meet their emotional needs and, 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 and see them as equals the way they could for each other. And, and that honestly is for two reasons, at least two reasons. One is that none of the men they dated would decenter themselves. Every single man that these characters try to date on some level, as progressive as they may be, wanted these women to orbit around them. Whether it's move to Santa Fe with them and literally leave their whole family back in San Diego or, you know, give up some other crap, right? Live with them. None of these men could handle being with these women without these women living with them. Why do you think that is? Could it be because the men need us more than we need them? And they weren't looking for a future hospice wife. They needed a companion and a therapist and all the things that women provide. And, and every time Grace and Frankie, who I believe it was like very much, you know, a, similar to their own friendship, the love between them and their, their real life friendship and their friendship on the show. No man could meet the needs of either of these women the way they could each other. So because the men were not decentering themselves and also, and this is key y'all, this is key. At least, especially with Jane Fonda's char character. And she's talked about this. I think it was her HBO special. She talked about this is one of the reasons why she left that billionaire, Ted Turner or whatever. She realized that she could not decenter men. She couldn't do it. She's been trying to do it. She was so conditioned to center men that she lost herself every time in every relationship. She couldn't not default to that. And, th and that... The only way to fix that was to just not marry them. Just tap out. And I know like, you know, I have a lot of friends who uh, after divorce are like, never again. And I understand that, especially if they, this man, children, everything is spent like at least a decade or two or more with this person. And they feel they lost themselves or never even got to find themselves. Never. Because they went from marriage, children centering him the whole time. They never got time alone, really alone, right? Because maybe they dated several people and then married him. So many women have never even had the opportunity to truly find themselves because men always make us lose ourselves. And then we are conditioned to lose ourselves. So it takes a lot of work to not default to that. That's one reason why I never thought I'd get married. I didn't see the point. You know, like didn't work out well for any of the women in my my family or less. My grandmas hated their husbands. One was literally kept hostage. Like from what I saw all my friends doing, I was like, um, why would I do this? Not just my friends, like all my acquaintances. Like it was so rare that I saw a marriage where I was like, that looks like something I want. So the only reason I was willing to get married, even considered it, is because at the age of 42, I had been centering myself for decades. That was my default. And then also, so I, you know, I'd had a lot of practice at decentering men and I'd done a lot of work on, on healing chronic codependency, which I realized I had once I did F around with men for the first time at the age of 36, got in a relationship and then I almost died. And I was like, oh, I'd better deal with this. So not only had I done a lot of the work, I also married a man who didn't have a lot of unresolved trauma and also had been doing a lot of his own work 
deconstructing this stuff and really trying to be a different man than he was taught to be under patriarchy. And then when we came together, we kind of didn't even realize we were going to do this, but we are decentering men and patriarchy together. Anthony is actively working on decentering de himself, right? And I'm actively decentering men still because even though I have decades of practice of literally being alone, like not dating anyone, as y'all know, I didn't have my first relationship until I was 36. Look at this dog. <laughs> Part of that was because I was afraid that I would be too codependent in a relationship and voila, I was when I first started dating. So it is gonna be a lifelong process. I am so indoctrinated with patriarchy, you know, which is tied to capitalism and white supremacy culture and all that crap. I mean, I'm from the South in the US, you know, purity culture, all that crap. And even though I like have been fighting against that and trying to unlearn that for a long time, I didn't realize I had still a lot more work to do once I got in a relationship because my default is still to like, bite my tongue, not say something, whatever. And luckily, um, with a lot of practice and with a partner who makes me feel safe and encourages me and literally says on a regular basis, babe, stop, cent okay, center yourself. Don't think about me. Stop thinking about what you think I need or you think I want or you think I need to hear or any of that. Stop thinking about everybody else and what you think. What do you want? What do you need? How do you feel? He says this regularly. And I need that reminder because it's still not my default. And so this is, I'm gonna be working on this forever. <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm ever going to not be working. I'm sorry. Didn't set you. No, I'm so sorry. Look at my point of view right now, y'all. <laughs> so anyway, but what I think really helped is I had a soulmate. I have a, I have a, a Frankie or a Grace. I don't know which one of them I am, honestly, because I'm a weird combo of both. I had a, somebody in my life, a woman, and she's still in my life. She's still like, and Anthony knows she's always going to be one of the most important people in my life, you know, right up there with him. You know, she doesn't just go away because I'm married. She's married too. And her husband knows. I'm her Frankie or Grace or whatever. Like they, and they're fine with that. And they both, um, you know, have their own BFFs. My, my husband has a BFF that he, he's like this with. So he gets it. So the whole point of this is I wish that we would see this as couples goals, community, soulmates that are not necessarily romantic. People who talk about you like this. When Jane Fonda was in this interview and Lily Tomlin was next, she was like, I mean, there's nobody, there's nobody like her. She talked about her like she was the love of her life. She's like, look, she's a genuine genius. She even said, you know, we're basically, you know, just short of being literally like intimate. Like we're just short of sleeping with each other. But like that, we are like, mm. And then when people were laughing and stuff, she's like, don't make fun of me. I'm being serious. And she is. She seems to love this woman and vice versa. Like she's the love of her life. And they're not married. They're not dating. It doesn't sound like they're hooking up. Again, we don't know any of these people. But since celebrities really do give us an opportunity to talk about our culture and relationships and stuff, I want to normalize this being couples goals, especially for women. We've been, we've been sold this fairy tale. Men will complete you. You need a man. Happiest day of your life is your wedding day. Um, and then your second happiest day is the day you ha are become a mom. Like, and if we don't do both those things, we fail. And women are not believing that crap anymore. I'm not saying give up on love. Uh, clearly, I believe in love or I wouldn't have gotten married. But what I am saying is that if you have a serious um codependency problem, which I believe most women do because that's all raised under patriarchy to literally enable and take care of and nurture the little king baby. If you have a, a codependency problem, but a really chronic one like I did, tap out. Just tap out until you do some more healing. And then anything you do, take it very slow. Don't jump into stuff because these men will derail your life. Sometimes even ruin your life and sometimes even take it. The risk is too big. It's a really dangerous game to play. So be careful if you do. In the meantime, find your, phrase, your grace or Frankie because those relationships will probably be the most rewarding ones of your entire life because those relationships are usually, unless they're toxic or got a bunch of like trauma, are usually based on mutual respect and equality. And it's really hard to find that with men.